Cheers. Let's talk about bulgur wheat because that's the thing I love. So bulgur wheat is a cracked wheat that cooks up a lot like rice, except it doesn't have the long grains like rice and even short grain rice, it's smaller than that. It's just, it's really small, but it still cooks up very rice-like. So if I were going to say, you know, what does, what does this dish do? It's similar to a rice substitute. So I make it with rice and vegetables. I was first introduced to it making tabbouleh. And one of my favorite things is hummus with tabbouleh and pita bread. That is phenomenal. Like I could eat that all day, except that I do get headaches from the hummus. So sometimes I have to sub it or I have to just take it easy, not eat as much as I might want to because it is so delicious. But you can make good tabbouleh um, that you need to cook some bulgur wheat with. And it's funny because I think some folks are intimidated by it because we don't see it cooked as much as rice. Like you go into the grocery store and you see rice everywhere. There's all kinds of rice, right? White rice, sticky rice, brown rice, long grain rice, wild rice. But you really have to look for the bulgur. And usually it's either going to be in your health food section or in the grains section. I know that when COVID hit, it was really difficult to find it. I no longer could find it at the grocery store. And so I ended up going online and I found, um, I found it at Bob's, I guess Bob's Red Mill. And no, they're not a sponsor, but I really like Bob's stuff. And I ordered like a big case of it because I was just like, I will eat it, right? Like, I love this stuff. Now, when you make tabbouleh, you're going to have, it's like a, you cook the bulgur, but nothing else is cooked. Everything else is pretty well raw. And it's just like chopped up parsley and chopped up tomatoes and, you know, cucumber and onion. And you just chop it really fine and you put it in there and you toss it around with the bulgur and serve it up. And like I said, I serve it with hummus, um, on a pita bread and it's just divine. So I can't talk it up enough, but I also serve it up like a rice dish or like a rice and vegetable dish. And that's generally how I cook it. The reason that I like it, even though rice is easier to find, is that I am one of those people, and I don't know how many of you are out there, but please don't leave me hanging. If this is you, pipe up and tell me I'm not alone. I have so much trouble cooking rice. I can never get it to come out how I want it. Now, I could probably do the instant things, you know, like the the ones that you just, I don't know, they're pre-packaged and probably pre-cooked and they take just a few minutes and you heat them up. That, that would probably work for me, but that's not really what I want from rice. And I have tried, I have tried to cook rice and I am no good at it, cannot make rice. <laughs> so it's always either too dry, too sticky, too wet. Too wet is a big thing with me. But with bulgur, what I found is it is so much easier. So if you are like rice cooking impaired, then bulgur wheat might work for you. It's not going to be cheaper than rice, but it's definitely easier to cook. So with rice, you're boiling it, you're watching it. There's this sweet spot that you've got to hit or else it's, like I say, coming out too sticky, too dry, too wet, whatever. The amount of water matters and different kinds of rice calls for different amounts of water. And with bulgur wheat, you just don't really have that much to worry about, right? So the basic idea of it, you can cook it with stuff, which I do, but the basic concept behind it is that you just put some oil or butter in a pan, some kind of, you know, grease in a pan, and then you cook it over that pan and roast it like kind of a little bit just to toss it. You toss it in the hot oil until it gets sort of browned a little bit. If you use a cup of bulgur in your dish, you would just add a cup of water. And then you bring that to a boil for about a minute and you cover it and you take it off the heat and you just let it sit for 20 minutes. And you can't burn it because <laughs> you're not really cooking it. It's just now that it's heated, it's absorbing the water on its own. So it'll absorb all the water and then you just go and serve it. And the only problem you can have is if you put too much water, but if you just do a one-to-one, it should be fine. 
And so I prefer it because it cooks perfect every time. I will generally cook my vegetables in the oil first. So I'll cook the vegetables, I'll season the vegetables, I'll use um, oil and get those cooking. And that's when I will add the bulgur and then you know, use that to get it to, to brown. It'll turn dark. It just takes about a minute of heating the bulgur until you'll see it turn dark. And then add your water, bring it to a boil, put the lid on, take it off the heat. And that's, that's it. It's just easy peasy. And I cook with it not because I'm a fancy person that, you know, doesn't want to make rice because it's too pedestrian. It's I really can't cook rice. And bulgur wheat, as, you know, exotic as it sounds uh, here, at least in the U.S. and especially Texas, <laughs> is easier. It's just easier. And to me, it's just as good as any kind of rice. I really enjoy it and I love it. And it subs as a as a side dish um, in place of rice. And you can also serve it as a meal if you want to do, like you've heard, I think a lot of the restaurants now are serving these grain bowls, right? You have these grain bowls and you can do things like that with it. Um, and so we're going to jazz it up just a little bit in this particular recipe. We're cooking up some vegetables and adding it. And so you'll get to see sort of a little bit dressed up version of it. Now, just to be clear, this is not a tabbouleh recipe. Uh, we, we might make that a little bit later on another episode, but this is just sort of a primer on how to cook bulgur wheat. And I guess with that, let's get cooking.
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. That'll make sure that you see a lot more cottage content on your feed for YouTube. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.